What's up guys? Back with a educational video. But wait, what do you, what do you, educational video? We're doing a crossover. This is an educational video that looks like a what the fitness. So this week we have the glucose goddess appearing on here and I'm sure she's gonna say everything completely evidence-based and not embellish anything because she's being interviewed by the illustrious Darth Hyman. Does that make her Princess Leia? The haircut's actually like somewhat kind of similar. She doesn't have the buns, but let's see what she says about food order. Eat your food in the right order. So anybody listening, if you're about to have a meal, let's say you have some chicken, some broccoli, and some potatoes. If you eat the elements of this meal in a particular order, you can reduce the glucose spike of the meal by by 75%. This means less aging, less inflammation, less weight gain, fewer cravings, etc. The right order is vegetables first, protein and fats second, and starches and sugars last. And so when we do this, when we eat our vegetables first during a meal, the fiber in the vegetables lands in our stomach, then in our upper intestine, coats the walls of our intestine with this viscous mesh, and then any starch or sugars you eat afterwards will be absorbed to a lesser extent in your bloodstream. Mm, mm. Therefore, smaller glucose spike. But you're eating the exact same thing. So this is like two truths and a lie, okay? Actually, what you say about food order, there is some truth to it. There are a few studies. Now, I don't want to get too excited because there are only a few. There's like three or four studies. They see a reduction in the area under the curve of the glucose and the insulin response to a meal if you're eating protein and vegetable before you're eating carbohydrate, even if you're eating the same meal. Everybody's like, oh, Lane, I thought you said it was just the macros and this stuff doesn't matter. I don't want to be too pedantic. But you know me in science, I just, I gotta go deep. So when you actually read the studies, the longest study where they assess this, they only measure out to 180 minutes. In a couple other studies, they only measure to 120. And in one study, they only measured to 60 minutes. So if you look at the IAUC glucose response, the area under the curve, in the study she's referencing, there was about a 75% reduction in the blood glucose response. Cool. Sounds amazing, sounds incredible. Where do we sign up? But then if you look at the studies done at 120 minutes and 180 minutes, it's more like 30 to 40%. Still significant, but then when you actually look at the graphs, and we'll throw some of them up here, you can see that after 180 minutes, the group that got the carbohydrate first their blood glucose and insulin is actually lower than the blood glucose and insulin of those people who ate either protein or protein and vegetables first. Well, how could this be? So what's likely happening is the protein or vegetables are simply just delaying the entry of glucose into the bloodstream. You still have the same overall amount of glucose in the meal. That glucose is still going to wind up in the bloodstream and that glucose still needs to be disposed of. So until they do a longer study where they can show where both groups have returned to their baseline levels of glucose and insulin and show the same thing, I'm not ready to state conclusively that food order affects your overall glycemic response because I don't think you can conclusively say that based on these studies because the group getting the protein or vegetable first has not yet returned to baseline at 120 and 180 minutes. Now, it is possible that maybe it requires slightly less insulin. It is possible there could be a lower glycemic response. However, she then just completely goes off the freaking reservation and starts talking about that means less aging and less inflammation, less weight gain. So they actually measured weight loss in some of these studies. And guess what? Both groups lost the same amount of weight. There was no difference. No difference in fat loss. So where is this difference? What what information are you using to make that claim? That's right, you just pulled it right out of your hiney. Sorry, I'm using the word hiney because I'm not cursing in this video. As far as inflammation goes, once again, this is a completely made up claim. There's absolutely nothing to support what she's saying. If you are a type two diabetic or you have impaired insulin sensitivity, yes, you can have elevated levels of CRP. But when we look at studies where calories and protein are equated and they vary the amount of carbohydrate and fat, there's no evidence that I've seen that markers of inflammation are different. So her making this leap that, oh, it's gonna change inflammation and it's gonna change your aging, like based on what? That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Unfortunately, while some of the stuff she said is kinda true, even though I wouldn't say that it's a fact based on the current studies, what she followed up with was complete and utter 
nonsense. So glucose goddess, my recommendation to you is go back to your biochemistry class, open the book and maybe actually learn how to study next time. Guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I will catch you next week.